So this diagram actually creates more details about the internals of a job execution in Apache Spark. So let's start it first. Uh, so in our master node, this is our master node where we are having our driver program, which drives our application. This is our master node. Okay. And so the code that we are writing behaves as a driver program, or if we are using interactive shell. So there's also interactive shell possible. Uh, available in uh, Apache Spark, uh, but it's only for Scala, uh, sorry, Scala or Python case. In that case, the shell will act as the driver program. But in our course, we are going to use Java, right? So we can, whatever the uh, Java program or application main program that we write, that is a driver program, uh, which will be driving our application. Now inside the driver program, the first thing we do is we create a Spark context. Okay. Inside the driver program, the first thing we do is we create a Spark context. Now assume that the Spark context is a gateway to all the Spark functionalities. It is similar to a database connection. Any command we execute in our database goes through the database connection. Likewise, anything we do on Spark goes through Spark context. Now this Spark context works with the cluster manager to manage various jobs. The driver program and Spark context take care of the job execution within the cluster. The job is so here. Once we create this RDD, uh, um, we'll discuss about RDD in details in, the, in our next video. But here, just uh, assume that RDD is a sort, sort of data structure and we just do some filtering and mapping. And finally, we actually call the count, which is the action. So whenever we uh, do all this type of like uh, transformations and actions on RDD, this is sent to the Spark context, right? And the Spark context, as the action encounters it, it will create a job. So this job actually contains all this, uh, you can say that all the RDDs, transformations and actions, it will create several type of tasks. And these tasks are actually scheduled in a form of a DAG scheduler. This DAG is directed cyclic graph. So which means that it doesn't have any cycles in a graph. And this, once these tasks are created uh, into stages of task, and then uh, this is uh, submitted, each state is submitted uh, to the task scheduler, which has which groups all these tasks and launch these tasks via the cluster manager. Now let's look at the worker node. Worker nodes are the slave nodes whose job is to basically execute the tasks. These tasks are then execution are executed on the partition RDDs in the worker node, and hence. Returns the result to the Spark context. When this is all done, this is returned to the Spark context again. Spark context takes the job, breaks the job into tasks, into tasks here, and distributes them to the worker nodes using the task scheduler. These tasks work on the partitioned RDD. These are like uh, when we actually do the uh, cover the RDD part, uh, we'll see that these RDDs are partitioned across various worker nodes. So in a sense, these tasks work on the partitioned RDD, perform operations, collect the results and return to the main Spark context. Here you will see that horizontal scaling is very easy. If we want to increase the number of workers, then we can divide jobs into more partitions and execute them in parallel over multiple systems. It will be a lot faster. With the increase in number of workers, memory size will also increase and we can cache the jobs to execute it faster. Now let's revise the whole workflow in steps. So step one is that the client submits Spark user application code. When an application code is submitted, we're talking about this application code, the driver implicitly converts user code that contains transformations. So this uh, filter and map, these are all transformations. And action is uh, say, for example, count or uh, like max or reduce function. So transformations and actions are converted into a logically uh, directed acyclic graph called DAG, okay, DAG. At this stage, it also performs optimizations such as pipelining transformations. So all these transformation that we are doing, like RDD1, RDD2 and all, these are all pipeline uh, and also some optimization is all performed on, on it. So the step two is after we have submitted the code and we have formed all this like uh, DAG logical uh, stages. After that, the step two is it converts the logical graph 
called DAG. This logical graph of DAG into physical education plan with many stages. After converting into a physical education plan, it creates physical education units called tasks. These are the tasks under each stage. Guys, the, the, this dark uh, scheduler, this all works in in the form of stages, where a lot of things are happening inside it. But in a sense, finally, it spits out all these type of different tasks in several stages that it creates. We also call this that the, 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 we split this graph into stages of task and submit submit each stage as ready to task scheduler. These tasks are all bundled together and then sent to the cluster. So this is all happening in the Spark context. Now the step three is once these tasks are bundled uh, and ready to be executed on the cluster. Now driver pro program, it actually negotiates, talk to the cluster manager and negotiates the resources. Cluster manager launches executors in workers node on behalf of the driver. At this point, the driver will send the tasks to the executors based on data placement. So this cluster manager is working as, as a negotiator to let how much uh, worker nodes would be available for the task and driver program directly talks to the cluster manager and uh, once cluster manager allocates the resources and instructs workers to execute the job. At this point, uh, the driver will send the tasks to the executors based on data placement and when executors start, they, reg they register themselves with drivers. Driver here. So the driver will have a complete view of executors that are executing the task. And during the execution, uh, the step four would be when the tasks are actually execute, executing in the worker nodes, in the executors. Driver program will also monitor the set of executors that run. Driver, no, driver node also schedules future tasks based on data placement. This is all the workflow going on. And when the results are done, the task is completed. The worker node will send the results back to the Spark context, which will be eventually uh, give, driven, uh, given back to them our main program. So guys, this was all about the, the very high level uh, architecture of Apache Spark and how internally the job execution works. It's still not very much clear that I mean, um, in, the, in our future uh, tutorials, uh, we will cover uh, all this in much detail by writing some codes and understand it better. Now, a few more points before we end up this tutorial. So each application gets its own executed processes, which stay up for the duration of the whole application and run tasks in multiple threads. This has the benefit of isolating applications from each other. Uh, and, and also there would be no like uh, sharing resources issue and all. So because we are the each of the applications are isolated from each other on each worker node. And on both the scheduling side, each driver schedules has its own task and executor side as well, because tasks for di from different applications run in different JVMs. It's not the same JVM. However, it also means that data cannot be shared across different Spark applications. Here we mean that uh, the different instances of Spark context without writing it to an external storage system, just like hard disk. Second point is that Spark is agnostic to the underlying cluster manager. We can use any of the cluster manager available as long as it can acquire executor processes and these communicate with each other. It is relatively easy to run it even on a cluster manager that also supports other applications, not just Java, but other applications. And the common uh, uh, cluster managers that we will uh, see is that there are Mesos, Yarn, Hadoop Yarn, and Kubernetes. And Spark has got its own uh, cluster manager as well. The third point is that the driver program must listen for and accept incoming connections from its executors throughout its, its lifetime. As such, the driver program must be network addressable from the work. So here we demand that the driver program and the worker nodes, there should be a proper communication between these two. Now, because the driver program schedules tasks on the cluster, it should be run close to the worker nodes, preferably on the same local area network. So guys, already we are talking about clusters and various things, but it's, it's always preferable that the driver program or the master node should be very much close to the worker nodes or the servers that 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 is uh, that uh, where we are running the workers. If you would like to send requests to the cluster remotely, it's better to run and to open an RPC that is a remote procedure call to the driver and have it submit operations from nearby than to run a driver far away from the worker nodes. By doing this, I mean it's uh, it would be always uh, giving us a better performance if they are very close, both the driver and the worker nodes. 
So guys, you have talked a lot about the cluster mode overview of the or the Apache Spark uh, high level architecture. In the next video, we'll see uh, a very high level overview again for Spark RDDs. So see you all in the next video.